for now. Now, that's it for conservative forces, introducing the idea of using work and energy when we have things like friction that make it easier to solve those types of problems. All right, you need to work, at this point you need to be working on, or in class you'll be working on 4.3 exercises next time. So make sure you look at these notes again. All right. Okay, so today we're talking about non-conservative forces. All right, so if we have non-conservative forces, what are we really talking about here? We are talking about different types of forces that actually cause energy to not be conserved. Now, dissipative forces, there are different types of non-conservative forces. There are non-conservative forces that can take energy out of a system. That's what we're talking about here. That's the dissipative forces, okay? Energy is not conserved. That's a biggie. Energy is lost and friction is a dissipative force. Uh, air resistance would also be a dissipative force, okay? Uh, when friction acts on the system, energy is converted to heat. Heat is a type of energy, but it's not mechanical energy. So we're losing things, okay? Um, it, and this is a fun example. For example, consider a group of soldiers and a group of hippies. Both have the same resources, but the soldiers can do more work than the hippies because they're more organized. Similarly, heat is not organized, so it can't do meaningful work. So what does that mean? What that means is when we look at this, and we look at our, our mechanical energy in equals mechanical energy out isn't in a case anymore. We've got K initial plus U initial. Now remember, U initial could be spring or um, it could be gravitational plus work non-conservative. Now that work non-conservative is going to be positive or negative based on whether or not it is putting energy in or taking energy out. And then that would equal K final plus U final. Okay. So... When friction acts, work is required to overcome friction. Since doing the work requires some form of energy, this energy is lost. So friction means energy is lost with respect to the system. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that the work non-conservative has to be equal to the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. In other words, if energy is lost, that guy should be negative. Okay, the change should be negative. If that guy is positive, in other words, say you give something a push or you throw energy, fuel into a tank, you're adding energy and then work non-conservative would be positive. All right, so let's start at example A. We have got a skier at the top of a hill, top of an incline. Okay, straight line to the bottom of the uh, slope a distance of 400 meters. Okay, so let's draw ourselves a little sketch here. Skier starts at the top. We got a skier here skiing down the hill, 20 degree incline. He's going to ski straight down. All right. Slopes a distance of 400 meters. Okay, so this we know. 400 meters. Cool. Okay. So now what? And we have a coefficient of kinetic friction. So we have coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.2. Calculate the skier speed at the bottom. Well, before we did this, we had to do it with all kinds of really hard um, it's Newton second law stuff. Now we don't have to. Because what we have to consider is U initial plus K initial plus work non-conservative equals U final plus K final. And no, it doesn't matter which order you put those in. U initial, this guy is MG. He's at the top if we consider this H, MGH. K initial is going to be one half MV squared, right? V initial squared plus our work non-conservative. Okay. Well, what work non-conservative going to be? Hang on. We kind of know this. That's due to friction, isn't it? And we know work is the force of friction. Due to friction is force of friction times the distance d. Okay. So we got this. Is going to be equal to mgh, only it'll be at the bottom of the incline. So this is actually going to be zero. And so this is going to be k final is going to be one half mv final squared. 
All right, so the first thing we have to do is let's finish filling this stuff in. So we know this is MGH, and we'll find all of this in a minute. One half MV initial squared plus force of friction is going to be mu times the normal force times D, which is one half MV final squared. All right, normal force, if we do normal force on the skier, we know normal force is this way, right? And we're going to do mg this way, and we've got theta here. So this is going to be mg cosine of theta, which is 20 degrees. So this is mgh plus 1 half mv. You know what? I'm going to quit doing that because this guy starts from rest. So this guy was 0. So that's zero, so that's zero, so I'm gonna quit writing that. So that goes away. Plus mu times mg cosine theta times d equals one half mv final squared. Now the nice thing is, is now we can see that the m goes away. Good thing, because they never did give us the math, his mass. We do need to find h though. So if we look at this as a right triangle, and we look, oops, didn't mean to do that. If we look, this as a right triangle down here. We've got this distance 400 here, we've got the height here, and we've got 20 degrees here. So the sine of 20 degrees is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse. So if I just swap those two to get H, what do we need? then we get h is equal to 400 times the sine of 20 degrees, isn't it? Okay, very cool. So now I can fill that in. So I have 10 times 400 sine 20 degrees plus, oh, should we do plus here? Let me ask you something. This non-conservative work, is it positive or negative? It is energy what? It's energy lost, isn't it? So this is the point at which we need to start thinking, and you could have done this earlier too, that this is really a negative. So this would have been negative, negative, and we can still say this is negative. So we're gonna put a minus here. So think about that when you, carefully when you do this stuff. So this is now minus. This is now minus 0 0.2 times 10 times the cosine of 20 degrees times the distance, which is 400, equals, we're going to go ahead and take this whole thing, multiply it by 2, and so we're equal to v final squared. So now all we have to do is take the square root of this big ugly thing, and we should get a V final that is approximately 35.11 meters per second. Okay, down to the bottom of that hill. All right. So let's look at the next one. We've got a safe being kicked up an incline. All right, what do we know? Kicked with an initial speed of V, so we do have an initial speed V. The incline is angled at theta. We have friction, mu. Right of the expression below is equal to distance D that block slides up the incline before stopping. Okay, let's just actually, there is no which of these is. Let's just actually write this and see. Okay, what is the distance D that the block slides up the incline before stopping? So it's going to be stopping. So we are looking for the distance D here. We know that V final is going to be equal to zero, right? U initial is going to be zero because it's at the bottom of the incline. And U final is going to be what? MGH. So we know U initial plus K initial plus work non-conservative is equal to U final plus K final, okay? 
Now we do know, let's remember this is friction, so this is going to be negative work. So we can go ahead and include that in. So we said U initial was zero and K final is zero. So we have one half M V initial squared minus force of friction times the distance equals M G H. Okay. So this now becomes one half M V initial squared minus mu times the normal force. This is looking very familiar, isn't it? All right, so what is V initial? V, initial speed V, so we make this one half MV squared minus mu, our normal force. What's the normal force gonna be? Here's my free body diagram. Right here, I have the normal force going this way. This is this way, MG is this way. So that normal force is gonna be what? theta, so this is going to be mg cosine theta, isn't it? Okay, so and what do we know about m? m is going away. Okay. Oh, we need D, distance little d. We should really call this big D. Let's be careful and use the correct. We use big D because what did it say? Distance D. So now let's solve for distance D. All right, so we have negative mu G cosine theta D equals GH minus one half V squared. Now all we have to do is divide, don't we? So D is going to be equal to G H. Now we don't know H though. So this is my height H. So we have to again say that this is going to be what? D sine theta. Okay. So let's take out H and put in D sine theta minus one half V squared all over negative mu G cosine theta. So there is D, okay? Let's look at the next one. A car, a model car of mass, of mass 0.5 kilograms is now placed in a track with friction, okay? Okay, the car starts at point A, going 16 meters per second, so we have an initial velocity, goes down a hill of height 8 meters, as shown, so it's height of 8, not the length of 8, and has a speed of 14 meters per second at point B. Calculate the work done by friction between points A and point B. So if we start this as our zero point, okay? Then in the initial point, this has kinetic energy and it has gravitational potential energy, doesn't it? So we have K initial plus U initial minus work non-conservative. This still has kinetic energy, or K final we should say, but does it have gravitational potential energy anymore? No, it doesn't. So this is just K Final. Okay, so this is going to be one half m v initial squared plus m g h minus work non conservative, which is the work done by friction, equals one. one half M technical difficulties here V final square okay so here we go
So if we look at this, then we know that our work non-conservative, I'm gonna bring it this side and move this to the other side. So work non-conservative is going to be equal to one half MV initial squared minus one half MV final squared plus MGH. Okay. So I'm going to just start plugging stuff in. One half point five times sixteen squared minus one half point five times fourteen squared. plus 0.5 times 10 times a height of 8. So let's see what that ends up as. So we have 64 minus 49 plus 40, grand total of 55 joules, because it is work, which is the work done by friction. Okay. All right, and that, guys, is non-conservative work. You get the idea, though, don't you? You're going to be doing work non-conservative is always going to, almost always in these cases, is going to be friction. But it doesn't have to be friction. It can be air resistance. It can be actually positive if you're adding energy into a system. So be careful and don't always assume it's negative. You have to think about what is it doing? Is it putting energy in or is it taking energy out? All right, so that's all I have for you for today.